Hey guys, how you doing? How are you doing today? Sorry, serious frenulum accident. You don't need to know. Anyway, that's pretty bad, but uh, there's worse. What is the worst thing in the world? Think about it. Maybe an example. Things are so dismal for you. Everywhere you turn, things aren't going right. Everything you try, you're just like a born loser. So, it gets so bad for you that you... The only thing you got left is to move to Winner, South Dakota. Winner, W-I-N-N-E-R, South Dakota. Winner, South Dakota, home of Vic Bay's Salad Bowl. You saw it right here. Vic Bay's Salad Bowl. When all else fails, you move to Winner. Matchbook of the episode. Hey, while we're here, we're just doing housekeeping right away. Give me a like. You know you're going to like this. I swear. There is an onion trick involved here, and other tricks are going to save your relationship. Anyway, barrel house word of the episode. Sticking with the team of theme, blah, ouch, of failure, done, D-O-N-E. A prevalent vulgarism in the southern states as done, gone, or what have you done, do. In other words, people asking you, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Uh, only heard among the lowest classes. Why are you looking at me for that? Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. What's the saddest thing in the world? I'll tell you what the saddest thing in the world is. An empty guitar rack. It is so empty. One, two, three, four, five, six pegs all empty. That is the saddest thing in the world. All right, you know I'm not going to let that situation exist very long. Look behind me. Problem solved. But what's the next worst thing? Well, the next worst thing is to have all these and not know which one of them you're going to work on. This is some of my inventory that I'm building up. So what I do is I take, like, I'm going to be working on this guitar next. Ooh, clean one owner. There's going to be some California stuff on here. I think you're going to like that. Anyway, what I do is I hang these arch tops on the wall and take a look at them and think about what I'm going to do. So, I have a remarkable memory. I remember everything you all did and said bad about me in the comments below, which is every comment I ever got. But anyway, you might be looking at something. You're thinking, oh, I could do this. I could do that. And then you get in your shop and it's like... What is it I said that I was going to do and I can't remember? Or, hey, I'm ready to start working on this guitar right here, any of these. And, um, oh, I'm all motivated. I got, oh, you know what? I don't have the parts I need. So I get stalled out. Now, I've told you all, I'm not a believer in Vegas guitars and Elvis guitars and these production line assembly models. My stuff is unique. How do you get a unique guitar? Unique up on it, that's right. Anyway, I'm the master of uniqueness. Now, when you start assembly lining stuff, you start losing your creativity, it becomes burdensome, and the next thing you know, you're listing your guitars for 180 on Marketplace, somebody's offering you 60 and you finally settle in, and you drive four hours on the fumes of what's left of your ego to finally sell the guitar for $90. When you do assembly line guitars, that's what's in your future. And if you like that, that's great. I don't personally. Anyway, today I'm going to show you a little trick where you get all your stuff in order. You can get and keep, retain the ideas you have in your head about specific guitars, whether they're cigar box guitars, coffee can guitars, license plate guitars, whatever they are, and have a system where you know what parts you have and which guitars you can finish. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you other couple of relationship tricks along the way that you're going to be like, dude, the guy is too much. So where was I? Oh, about having a system that is so organized that it frees up all your time for the creativity that you want, like mine that you covet. Anyway. So let's start off with where my ideas start. I get this. I mean, clean one owner, um, old, got a V-ish neck, uh, been painted or something, 
uh, Bakelite tuner pegs are coming off. Got a crack or two. Um, anyway, you got to love this one. So this is what's in the queue. So I hung it on the wall for a while. I got some ideas. I'm going to show you along the way uh, what those are. And then you'll see this built on an episode. I think we're going to call this one the California Junk Pile. Uh, no, it's not the sidewalks in the tent cities. It's a guitar, but anyway. Um, so, about relationships. Let me help you all out. Um, it's pretty sad that I got to do this for you, but I will. Y'all are my y'all are my subscribers. Anyway, I want you to remember this is coming from the guy that taught you. Get an onion. Cut this part off of it. Right there. See that? Nobody's gonna eat that. So you cut that off and you say to your significant other, hey, let's watch that movie you've been telling me about. Don't name one, because number one, you don't even know any of the titles of them, right? And that way, it'll seem like they're going to have a choice, right? That's going to be attractive to them. Now, you're going to be sitting there, you're going to be watching this stuff, and it's like, you know, no, not into Fabio and all that kind of stuff. So you're in pain. You are in pain so bad you want to cry, but you can't. Well, guess what? Remember that thing? You got it in your pocket right here in your bib. See, see, see this thing? This clip? See this air spot? That is a perfect place to put it. And you're sitting there, and she's watching you out of the corner of her eye like, he's not into this. And that's not going to work out well for you later, if you know what I mean. But when you got this right here, guess what? The tears are real, son. The tears are real. Your lucky day. You're going to think you live in winter South Dakota but wait that's not all you got kids yeah when they turn delinquent first thing the guy at the office with the glasses like this the one that never looks at you looking over your head at the wall or something and his watch to see how many more people he's got lined up to take their money says to you the inevitable question did you ever read to your kids yeah I read them uh, a lot of album cover, uh, liner notes, uh, uh, read them part of the Chilton Manual. I read mine's Structural Biology of Poems, and, uh, but no, all of a sudden, you're, you're the bad guy. So I fixed this. Do not take my idea. This is as good as copywriting and patent it all, all rolled into one, but I had this idea. I'm going to write a book. I already wrote it up here. So you think about it, it's real. Who needs you, Anthony Robbins or Tony Robbins, whatever your name is? Listen here. So anyway, I got this idea for this book. You're going to like reading it. And all that matters is you read the quality of it and the context. Pff, as long as they don't come out saying the sixth word letter of the alphabet, when you're done, it's, it's success. And, and if you team this up with the onion trick, you're good to go. But here it is. I wrote this book. It's called The Puppy and the Kitty. So on the front it says The Puppy and the Kitty with some artwork by me. You've seen my artwork. It's awesome. So then you open it up. It's got a couple pages that are, uh, you know how books always have library, congress number, you know, dedicated to whoever you want to dedicate to. And then it opens up and there's another part that says the, the Puppy and the Kitty. And then you turn the page and you say, this is the story of the puppy and the kitty. Now, the pictures are kind of the same. You just turn them a little bit, make, make their face look, you know, cut out a little different, whatever. This is the story of the puppy and the kitty. And you turn the page. And, of course, the pages are like this thick. The trick is to make this book look really thick so you put some time into it. Anyway, this is the story of the puppy and the kitty. And you turn the page and it says, one time or once upon a time, probably once upon a time is better, there was a puppy and a kitty. And then you turn the page and it says the end. And, and then, of course, the pages are like this thick. It's like a board book. Not made out of a board, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is the story of puppy and kitty, the end. Mission accomplished. Uh, 
put that with the onion trick. You're in the bonus round. Now, finally, what this episode is really all about. Let me put this guitar down before I drop it. This is going to be very exciting for you. You wake up one morning on a Saturday. Don't save this for when you're in trouble. Save it for when you're kind of okay, which is rare, I know. But you wake up and you say, hey, I got an idea. Let's go to the craft store. And they're going to be thinking, oh my God, this is a miracle. He is actually asking to go to the craft store. Yeah. And what do you need from the craft store? Well, you need some of these styled basic tote bags. You see them tote bags right there? You need them. And you need some chick flick teal paint, which you already have. I know you do. If you don't, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I'm not your priest. I cannot absolve you of your sins. And you need some clips. You know, these kind of clips, right? And you need some mini composition books. Mini composition books. Don't get regular composition books because smart people use mini composition books. And make sure, again, you have Chick Flick Teal. Get those things. And now I'm going to show you what you do with them. As you're walking out of the... Uh, craft store and they're still in complete and utter disamazement you might want to pull the onion trick again don't overuse this one but you might want to pull this onion trick again when they're looking at you like i can't believe what's happening and you got a tear rolling dude <laughs> it is your lucky day anyway you're welcome uh yeah who needs marriage counselors just come to me you're welcome now let's get to the bench and figure out what it is i'm talking about all right, guys, if you've never seen one of these stands, they're pretty handy. Um, you can put five guitars on them, put seven guitars on them. Um, they have a place right here in between uh, the neck. Let's pop this up a little bit. They have these pegs that separate uh, the bodies. And if you're smart, you might put a rag up here and drape it uh, back down over one guitar so it doesn't hit another one like this one right here and uh, or use maybe your chick flick teal handkerchief and put it in there because you don't want these things scratched up anyway get one of these racks they're a lot more effective than having guitars hanging on the wall or crashing to the floor now I'm gonna let you covet these while I pull these off here if you see one that you really like, you might want to send me an email before I tear into it because you might not like what I do with it, even though you'll still want it. It would be personalized to you. Anyway, I don't want to hear no crash into the ground. Ooh, look at this one. This is a U.S. Strad. Ooh, nice one. And then, ooh, I got this body out of Japan. Uh, you can tell that I've got, you've seen this before when I was doing the uh, Super Bowl like, boat across, across the street with my neighbor again. But anyway, we were sanding a bridge. And uh, yeah, this is a nice one. we are fix that up. Anyway, we're gonna leave this one here. Let me check the camera angle again. Yeah, we're gonna leave this one here on the rack as a display for what it is I'm gonna do. There we go. And um, notice again, those pegs are there and they hold everything in place. So let's pay attention to those pegs and let's get our craft. Look at this camera is floating. It was trying to take off. I guess there's a helium balloon tied to it or something. All right, let's run through this guitar really quick. Um, it's pretty plain. It's got kind of a palish uh, sunburst paint job. Uh, the bridge isn't what I would prefer. Um, it doesn't have any sound. Uh, the tailpiece leaves something to be desired. It's a student instrument. We talked about this and how its fingerboard is very narrow off the deck. Remember that? We did that episode about diving board uh, fingerboards and the, the danger of that. Let me make sure my camera angle is right again here. But as we go up, you know I'm going to matchbook the neck on this thing. And you know that the top up there, there is no label on that. 
on that knack or that headstock so we're going to do something about that but overall this is a pretty nice guitar and we're going to hot rod it up and put a pickup on it and um so we should get a checklist of what this guitar needs don't you? all right so one more time real quick this is going to be a california themed guitar the color of the guitar is good for that California old California license plates are black and gold did you know before they were black and gold before the plate was black with gold lettering they were actually the other way around the plate was gold and the lettering was black so let me see here I'm going to need to change out the trapeze tailpiece I think I want to use a black one I think I need a bridge a floating bridge that's blackish dark wood with some gold trim i think i'm gonna need some california matchbooks and i think i'm gonna need a map of the los angeles area or something to put up there so i got all these ideas so i almost forgot them before when i told you 30 seconds ago so what do i do you remember them books we bought at the craft store them little mini composition books these ones right here Ooh, look at that one you know what I'm gonna take this mini composition book right here and I am going to take a pencil out of my wink can and I'm gonna write down all my ideas here now I'm gonna take this part here I'm gonna write down what my idea was maybe do a little sketch or something and then I'll know all the parts I need right so when it comes time later, I can repeat this and go looking through parts and say, okay, I need this idea was I needed this, this, and this. Wrong. Let me show you something you've never seen before. This is what's going on in the background or back of house that they say at resorts and theme parks. I got these boxes. They're all the same. Contents are not. How would I know? Well, they're labeled. This one says picks pickups and electrical. Still recumbering recovering from that frenulum accident anyway pickups and electrical headstocks and tuners and bridges and tail pieces now remember i've got my ideas written down in the book so while i'm here all right so let's run through this i'm going to need a black trapeze tail piece check I'm going to need a dark floating bridge with yellow or gold accents. Check. I'm going to need a black humbucker low pro profile that fits under the strings of the student instrument. Check. I'm going to need two black jacks. Ooh, got them. I'm going to need a piezo, got that. I'm going to need two potentiometers. It'll be volume controls, got that. I'm going to need a black knob and a yellowy goldy knob. Ooh, look at that, got them. I'm going to need some California matchbooks, about five of them to do the neck and the template to digitize them for the net got all that right there there we go i'm gonna need a map to put on the neck of look at that los angeles county an old one i can cut that got that i'm gonna need ernie balls the tennis ball green pack got those yep there's that template look at that that'll fit them right there perfect I'm going to need a bone nut. There it is. I'm going to need some black vintage tuners and boxy looking puppies. Three left, three right. Got them. I'm going to need a pick guard on this thing. Got a template. Need to match up those holes. Oh, look at that. Already got that one. Now I'm going to need something to make the pit guard out of something like this old 1956 California plate. See how the colors are? I just put that on there. Oh, look, I already have it drawn out. Looks like I'm ready to roll here, right? 
Got that. What am I missing that I can dig around for later that I don't have? Absolutely nothing. Oh, I got, you know, I put coins under there. You know, I got these little pieces of wood. Um, what else do I need? Well, I guess I could use a silver dollar surprise, but other than that, it looks like I got everything I need, right? Right. You know these binder clips? Well, look, one side of it's painted chick flick teal. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take my mini composition book, and I'm going to clip it on there like that. Why do I have that color out instead of this color? Well, if this color were out, it would mean that I don't have everything that I need to build out this guitar. So, when I see this, it tells me something's missing. What's missing? Well, I would write it down in the book. If I have everything I need, I just flip this around, good to go. So now I got all them parts up there on top of my thing. I got all this scrap apparatus up here. That's good, right? Of course not. Now you know why we went to the craft store. We're going to pull out one of these style basic tote bags. And since I have my gray shirt on today, we'll use gray. And look at this. We're going to take and put all of that stuff right there. Oops, I'm blowing it right there in this tote. Get ready to be completely disamazed. Okay, so I got my tote. It's got two handles on it. I bag up the stuff that has to do with tuning, uh, the tailpiece, the bridge, the tuners, the strings. I put them in the bag like so. I got my graphics, my matchbooks I need to digitize, and the template that goes with it. I put them in there. Um, I take all my electrical stuff. Put that in there. I take my template and my map, uh, map and all that, and I put that in there like that. There we go. And I have it all in here. Look at that. Everything fits in here. Then, because I have it done versus not done, all my parts, I just take this now and I snap this onto the toe like that. That tells me everything is done. Okay, last thing I want to tell you about is I've got these little flash cards and if I want to take pictures or film an episode or something, I just slip that underneath here and in between the pages like so and that way I can document everything. Now, I just take this, pull it out of the way and flip that right there on my rack and what do you know? When I want to work on the guitar, it's all right there. And I can take inventory as to what's going on with that clip. Uh, just make notes, keep ideas, change ideas. But again, I can walk by my rack and figure it out. If you don't want your guitar over here, just flip this over the back. And these handles are pretty handy. But guys that is how i keep all this stuff arranged in my head and believe you me i have the blessing of the fabulous mrs olson she's so proud of me all right guys in all seriousness it's pretty easy just to be unique and to build unique instruments does not mean you have to be disorganized it doesn't mean that people have to overpay uh, on the price just because you can't keep your stuff right. Um, it doesn't mean you're building guitars that you promise will go out next week and then deciding that, oh, those tuners that I get that I'm trying to save a buck on are going to get hung up in a Connex somewhere in Long Beach. You got all that stuff. It, there's no need for any of that. Uh, I remember I got drawers of stuff around here. I used to see stuff and go, oh, I think that would make, oh, here's here's a good one. Oh, that would make a good resonator, right? Well, it probably would, but um, 
you start collecting stuff and the next thing you know when it comes down to what you really need it's just not there so for the price of a couple of clips and a chick flick tea a little book and some of these totes you can make a system that's really arranged and it will tell you what you have and what you don't whenever you see that that black side sticking out there and you don't see the teal sticking out at you it says something is missing out of what it's going to take you to complete that guitar uh, another thing is you really don't want to store these arch tops in your shed where it's 20 below zero one day and 85 and 110 percent humidity which means it's raining um, the next day because your body's warping cracks so you want to keep the system where your guitars are uh, and it will kind of motivate you once you see I have several different ones to choose from I have all the parts I need maybe I want to change something maybe something will be a little bit different the idea I had has changed I can write that stuff down in that little book and then capture all that stuff on that flash card and that's how I capture all my videos for you so try this method out let me know how it works I appreciate you watching me give me a like and now we're going to get back into the craziness that is my shop. But see you next time. Oh, last thing for the naysayers out there. You're saying, well, what if I'm building a coffee can guitar? What if I'm building a Mississippi Fred McDowell themed license plate guitar? Well, guess what? Ace, check this out. You know how to hang a five gallon bucket? What do you know? See you next time.